Near Highway 97, leading to the Okanagan, are towering wind turbines. Even on a calm day, their blades are spinning, generating power. Stephen Godkin is taking a closer look at the blades. The blades look good, really good. Such a clear day, you can see like the whole surface of the blade. Canadian Power operates 10 turbines in the region. So the turbines are 100 meters high and then the blades of the, the, the rotor are 47 meters. At full strength, they can produce enough electricity to power 9,000 homes and they spark many questions. So one of the questions I get asked the most is, why aren't they always turning when we drive past? So because of the, um, the, the, the forecasting of the wind on this site, we tend to see a lot higher production at night. So when people are driving past at night, you know, it's dark, they're not able to see the turbines turning. The BC government plans to expand wind energy and fast. To do so is dropping the need for environmental assessment for nine new projects. These projects will generate nearly 5,000 gigawatt hours of electricity per year. That's enough to power half a million homes, the same as the Site C Dam. This push for renewable energy contrasts sharply with US President Donald Trump's energy plans. He halted permits and loans for new wind projects on his first day in office. Washington DC seemed to be uh, completely ignoring the, the ground evidence in those states that are run by Republican governments and instead uh, em embraces a uh, very crude anti-renewable energy pro-fossil fuel policy that misses the, uh, the trend of the time uh, that uh, renewable energy is becoming cheaper and cheaper. It's actually more advantageous now than fossil fuel supplied electricity. Still, Canada lags behind the US in wind energy production. Wind accounts for nearly 6% of Canada's electricity. In the US, it's closer to 10. Fast tracking projects in BC could cause concerns for nearby cities and towns. We have to manage uh, the potential nimbyism that we see in communities. We have to look at locations that maybe not always ideal for the wind conditions, but uh, contribute to the portfolio and are sufficiently far away from communities that could be impacted. So we need to find buy-in also through participation of communities. But there is support from indigenous communities. Eight of nine projects will be majority owned by First Nations. The Salto First Nations near Moberly Lake is one of them. In a statement, Chef Rudy Paquette says the wind project will create jobs and economic development while also respecting their treaty and making wise use of natural resources. Industry leaders say the projects are also an opportunity to attract skilled workers. It'll be great to see new trades coming in, so blade technicians, turbine technicians, there's been a bit of a dearth of talent in, in those fields in, in BC. The BC government hopes to have the nine new projects spinning by 2031, as it tries to keep up with the growing demand for power and cut emissions. Camille Vernet, CBC News, outside West Kelowna.